So this is the three-quarter horsepower GE motor that was used in the 50s along with the Franklin motor, but more of the greenies had this three-quarter horsepower. It has this uh, little shield on the back, external capacitor, and an external little box with the starting relay inside. So it's pretty easy to work on. In front of it is the uh, type with the larger shield around the spring. So let's get to it. First we'll take off this paper shield. If yours doesn't have it, you'll want to create something like this because there's three contacts on that external box that could sort against your motor case. That long bolt holds this uh, retaining clip which holds the capacitor and holds the start relay all in place. Again I like to use a red marker to mark one of the terminals on the capacitor just to get it back the way it was. And there's only two leads of the three that you have to take off the box. So I mark one of those two so that I can get the box back right. Or you can write down which color goes with which lead. Give yourself a little drawing. The three terminals are numbered so you could easily write down which number and which color. These just slip right off. You can see a screw on them, but you don't really have to unscrew it. They just slip right off. It's just easier for me to use the marker than to draw it on a piece of paper. So there's the box. I've never tried opening it up to see what's in there. I haven't had a problem with any of those, so someday I guess I will, and I will have to try and open one up. So now we can take those four case screws out. On this motor, two of the bolts had stripped heads, so I had to use my Dremel and cut uh, slots in it so I could take it out with a screwdriver. So once in a while you have to do something creative like that. And this motor also is the one that had the four little nuts on the other end. Let's see those nuts on my bench. So it comes apart pretty easily. Take both ends off so you can clean everything out thoroughly. The wires feed through easily. I've only seen uh, wires with bad insulation on the GE 1 and 8 horsepower motors, ones that seem to have come from the 70s and early 80s. These real old motors had real good insulation. You'd think they'd be the ones that had the insulation problems. So now you can get to both bearings, inspect them real good. I didn't mention it, but there's that spring type of washer on the other end. There's your spacer. Don't lose that. Okay, and I'm, again, editing a lot of time, but we'll do a lot of cleanup before we take off the bearings. Put the new bearings on. There's that spring washer I was talking about. Clean the oil off of that. Reassemble it in the exact opposite order that came apart. You can tell I use my mallet quite a bit. I wouldn't want to use a regular hammer. Because you could easily crack your aluminum. Our mallet's quite a bit safer with the soft metal. And my mallet has two ends. One's a little bit harder than the other. For times you need to be firm. The other end's rubber ear, so a little safer still. So 
So I have the one bearing set back in. I'll slide the housing over. Make sure you don't pinch your wires. Don't want to create any problems for yourself. Of course, you should have inspected your wires. Make sure there's no cracks. Take care of that if there are. You can always replace the entire little pigtail. And go right back to where it is uh, connected into the windings if you have to. Inside there you'd want to solder it together because there could be more heat. These old motors will really go a long, long time as long as they're not flooded or something. Uh, you just replace your bearings. If there hadn't been electrical problems, your windings would be good for many years. There's no reason to get rid of these old motors. People ask me if uh, if they should upgrade a three-quarter horsepower to a one and an eighth, and I always tell them that if the three-quarter has good bearings and your headstock has good bearings and belts and everything's tuned up right, the, the three-quarter will do anything you need it to do. And I've heard reports that the horsepower rating system back in the 50s is different than horsepower is now and that the new one and eighth horsepower rating would have tested out at three quarters back in the 50s so there may not really be any difference between the motors so just get them open get them cleaned up get new bearings in them and they should be good for another 25 years or more about the age that I typically see motors needing bearings. Some of the Emerson motors are starting to need bearings, but only maybe one out of every four that I'm seeing right now. Okay, so I got the case aligned with my marks that I made. Here I am putting one of those little nuts to thread into. The nuts are not integral like they are in that first motor we worked on. I like to get a couple of the bolts started so the case won't slip out of position. And after I have all four together, then you can cinch it down. Make sure the case is cinched together well. Make sure there's no gaps. And that way everything's aligned right and held right. This is a pretty easy motor to work on, not a lot of fidgeting involved inside. The hardest part's really just getting the bracket back on, holding the capacitor and holding the box. Because you're holding uh, three or four things on at once and you can't really see where the bolt's going to. That paper cover kind of hides it from view. Again, I've only found one bad capacitor out of about 50 motors I've worked on, and I've worked on over 150 headstocks, so it's really just one bad capacitor out of more than 150 I've worked on. And that was probably caused by an electrical uh, spike or something. I think these capacitors go many, many years. They're just used for just your first moments of uh, with your machines on. They just kick on just to get the motor kick started and then they're out of the loop. So they're only used very briefly each time you turn it on. Okay, so you see what I had to do here. Put the capacitor in its place. Put that box in its place. Put the bracket over those. Put the paper over that. Try and get that bolt threaded down into its little position while balancing everything together. You might have noticed I already had the shiv back in place. It would be a little easier if I had done this before putting the shiv on. Because then I could balance the motor on the edge of the workbench a little easier. So I'm not sure why I put the shiv back on first. 